Welcome to Electro Online. We now start a series of videos about the planet Venus. Now, initially, when Venus was observed through telescopes, we couldn't really tell much about the planet. We knew it was about the same size as the Earth. It was completely covered in clouds, and because of its proximity to the Sun and its apparent likeness to the Earth, the imagination kind of got a hold of us, and we thought there might be a very lush green planet between us and the Sun. As it turned out, when we started visiting the planet with satellites and we started looking at the planet using radar technology, beaming radar waves toward the planet, receiving those radar waves back, and we began to discover what the surface looked like. And also, when we began to measure the temperature of the planet, we began to realize our imagination was completely wrong. It is basically a very barren, rock-like planet that is blistering hot. So not a good place for life to be found. But nevertheless, Venus is still a very, very interesting planet. And we're going to discover that through these series of videos. So here what we're looking at is a reproduced picture made from radar waves. So we beam radars to the surface. They bounce back based upon the Doppler shifts of those radar, radar beams. We can kind of make up what the planet looks like to pretty good detail. So here we have a picture of Mad Mons, which is one of the big volcanoes on the surface of Venus. We'll learn a whole, whole, whole lot more about that. And here is kind of like a global view of the planet. Again, there's no water to be found on the surface, very small trace amounts in the atmosphere. And you can see that there's a lot of variation in the surface, and we'll learn all about what that means and what that entails. But at least you can see there's a lot of interesting things to be seen, even at this scale, there's a lot of good stuff that we can see about Venus. So what we're going to do now is take a look at Venus as a planet. We're going to look at the major properties and characteristics of the planet, the orbit and so forth. And then we're going to delve more into the details. I think you'll like it. It's a very fascinating study of a planet like Venus. So let's go ahead and get started. So basic uh, properties. Average distance from the sun is about 108 million kilometers, which is about 72% the distance between the Earth and the sun. At perihelion, it's a little bit closer at 107.5 107, million, and at aphelion, a little bit farther at 108.9 million. Unlike Mercury, the eccentricity orbit is very, very small. You can see it's 0 0.0068, so there's not a lot of variation in the distance between Venus and the Sun. The inclination of the orbit relative to the ecliptic plane made by the Earth going around the Sun is 3.39 degrees. As a planet is concerned, that's quite a bit. It's not quite as much as Mercury, but it's more than the typical planet in the solar system. The orbital period 224.7 days, we'll just call it 225 days. So it takes 225 days for the, for the planet Venus to make it around the Sun once. What's interesting is that the rotational period is actually longer. It takes 243 days for the planet to make one rotation on its axis. And by the way, the rotation is retrograde rotation. So looking from the north, the planet goes around the Sun in a counterclockwise direction while it's rotating in a clockwise direction. That's kind of interesting. It's only one of two planets, and then also including Pluto, that rotates in a retrograde motion. The orbital speed, since it's fairly close to the Sun still, is a whopping 35 kilometers per second, not quite as fast as Mercury, but definitely faster than the Earth, which is about 29 kilometers per second. The obliquity, means, which means the orientation of its rotational axis relative to its orbital axis, so to speak, it's 107.4 degrees. Essentially, the planet is upside down, not quite perfectly upside down, so there's a difference of about 2.6 degrees with the vertical axis of rotation and the orientation of the orbit of the planet. The diameter of the planet is 12,104 kilometers, which is about 91, but 94.9 percent the diameter of the Earth. Let's just call it 95 percent. The circumference, once around the planet, 38,000 kilometers versus about 40,000 kilometers for the Earth. So you can see that it's roughly the same size, just slightly smaller. 
Mass-wise, it's about 81.5 percent the mass of the Earth at 4.868 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. For the Earth, it's virtually or almost 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The density, a little bit less. 5,243 kilograms per cubic meter, which makes it about 5.243 grams per cubic centimeter. If you like those units better, the Earth is close to 5.5, so it is a little bit less. But since it's a smaller planet, the density at the center is not being as compacted by the weight of the planet above it. So it probably has roughly the same proportions of metal to rock inside the planet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later as well. The escape speed in order to get away from the planet, 10.4 kilometers per second, about 11 kilometers per second for the Earth. Not that we ever expect to send a spacecraft down to the surface and try to get away from the surface, but for other reasons, it's nice to know that number. It's good enough that we can actually land a spacecraft on the surface. It doesn't last very long because of the tremendously hot and corrosive conditions. So most spacecraft that land on the surface only last for a few minutes before they, they stop communicating with us. The surface gravity, we have an acceleration of 8.92 meters per second squared or 0.91 or 91% the gravitational attraction of the, at the Earth's surface. Albedo is quite high for Venus because of that complete cloud cover around the surface at 0.59, which means that 59% of the light it receives is reflected back into space, which is one of the reasons why Venus is such a bright object in the sky. Not only is it close, not only is it fairly large, it's almost as large as the Earth, it has a very high albedo. So yes, it is the brightest object after the Moon when it's up in the sky. Surface temperature, a whopping 460 degrees centigrade. Daytime, nighttime, at the polar caps, at the equator, makes virtually no difference. The temperature is virtually the same all over the planet's surface at 460 degrees centigrade, which is about 860 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it's hot enough to melt lead. And so circuit boards don't do well because once you land and the circuit boards heat up, uh, pretty soon the components actually will, will fall off the, the circuit board, so it'd be very difficult to keep any sort of equipment running on top of the, at the surface of Venus. Atmospheric pressure, another big surprise, 92 bars, which means that the atmospheric pressure on Venus is more than 90 times the atmospheric pressure of the Earth, which is slightly more than one bar. The atmosphere content, it is 96.5% carbon dioxide, 3.5% nitrogen by the number of molecules, and a small smidgen amount of water vapor has been measured in the atmosphere as well. So you can see that it's not a very hospitable atmosphere as well. On top of that, we have no magnetic field on Venus, no magnetic field because there's probably no dynam dynamo effect. We believe that has a lot to do with the fact that it takes over 240 days for Venus to make one rotation on its axis which probably means there's no dynamo effect inside the planet, so no magnetic field. However, there is a magnetosphere because there is an interaction between the magnetic fields created by the solar wind particles and the upper ionosphere of the atmosphere because those, the upper part of the atmosphere has been hit by ultraviolet radiation of the sun, the electrons have been stripped away, and so the motion of those particles with the motion of the of the uh, solar wind particles, there is an interaction between the magnetic fields created by those, and so there is a magnetosphere around the planet, but not caused by an internal magnetic field which doesn't exist. So those are some of the basic concepts and parameters of the planet Venus. We'll talk a little bit more about the structure of the planet itself. That's how we start.